So that's why we also can just set me for the new project here. Let me go to web and perform some deprecation. Let me go to the deprecation of let's call it as my site or something so that we can clear. Let me make it a startup project. Now here what we are going to do is we are going to uh, design a single site right? let's say which contains a header right? and some few, uh, some photo and the main content right? so let's design using the master pages now <clears throat> let me get a new so for our master pages right? in the history now we have seen web forms right? web form is something which is a page or a normal private page yeah. where everything <coughs> Which is the end pages is it? I mean, um, you know, movie render, right? Which we normally call the state page, right? Dot into the state page we have, right? So on top of this, we have something called master page, right? So whose uh, extension will be dot master, right? So you can use this master page, right? Which you can actually create different content pages if you want. So let's check that. So first let's create a master page. Right? You can use an add. Uh, you can see here, here is where we have a master page if you want. So by default as we are using your web, web application, right? ASP.NET web application here. So as soon as you click on add, you get all the fields, <coughs> whatever are required to get, right? So let's click on a master page here. Right, you can see uh, the main amount. Now, in this, if you use site or site one, you normally use site or uh, main dot master and all, right? So let's use site dot master. Let me click on OK. So as soon as you click, you can see you have a site dot master, and by default, you get some HTML code here. So we have seen you know, all the directives for different web forms, right? Now, for a master, you get a directive called master directive. Right? It is specific to a master. You are defining, once you define, you are not only HTML you are creating, but once you define your directive called master, right? Then which means your dotted uh, will understand that this is a master page you should have. So in here, we have a few more things you can see. We have something called content placeholder. Now these content placeholders are nothing but different placeholders, right? <coughs> for header, for body, for footer. Whatever you want to keep stuff, keep uh, common across different pages, right? You can actually use the content place folder to design it, right? So let's remove all the or uh, let me take this content folder, content place folder here, and this ID is important. Let's say this is a head, and this is and let's say body, and let me create one more content place folder here, and let me call it as so let's say I have two different, uh, you know, contents I have. So here what I'm going to design is, I will take separate names for head. Let's say I have a div here. In this div, I have head. And similarly, I have separate division. So I'm designing my actual master page so that I can actually design the child. One and a half separate do for my <coughs> so in between let's put it as let's say a small break here for this break here for this. Now you can see I've designed a simple master page where I will be designing head and I'll be designing footer and the only body will be changing across different pages let's say. Now with the head page, what to demand? Let's say we have a small image first. An image, let's say. Fine. So in this image, let me just uh, so here let's create a folder and you can see you can add a folder called images. And let me add the existing image. Now to add any existing resource, right? You can just right click on the folder, go to add, and we have an option called existing item. Right, select existing item. We will go to desktop where I will select any of the image. Let me select this image. Now let's go to LNG and go to properties plus on 4 
right and go to source so we have a source either you can select source here or if you already know that you can type source is equal to it will give you p2i you can click on that right either way you can know. go to media and select right now this will give you a content result and in future let's say something like so this site is something copy I'm just giving an example, right? This is a common filter I have. Where, so before and after the day, this day, let's say I'm taking a horizontal rule. HR. HR means it will actually be a horizontal rule for my page. Go to the and see how it works. Now this is a horizontal rule. Now let me just move this a uh, bit uh, smaller. Let's go to height and just say this is 40. Right? It looks a bit better. Now you can see this is a copyright. Now let me move this copyright a bit more. Now let me move this copyright a bit more. Right, let's yes, take select and then select and then click. Right, so that if you look at the view. And let's say here, let's call it as a minimum height and some, some 100 px. Right, and for body, Let's say minimum height, which is spine, minimum height. Now these are CSS, anyways. These are HTML designers, let's say. Right? Now let's say this is some time at which I'm taking the part. Right? And the uh, error part, let's say we have a minimum height of, uh, I mean, let's say 100 PSD. Now if you go back here, right now you can see a decent master page creator, we have a header. And this is the body part which you are going to use uh, dynamically to run the body and use the filter. Fine. So this is about a single mouse page we created with a simple image and all. Fine. Now let's go back and see how to create child pages. So let's create these pages. So let's say we have a master. Right? And let's create a simple page called home. Right? I will say the home page. And let's create a simple contact something page and let's say about page. Right? And, and let's say some some something like this page. Right? So these are four pages you have. Let's create this page. Right? Now we have a master created and let's create home. Right? So how to create time pages here? Two ways. We have set the body right click on this and you can say add a content page. Right. So as soon as you click on content page, you can see the web form will be created, a separate web form will be created where your name will see a master page file. This is important. So this is a normal web form which you have already seen before, where everything will get a page directly and where it's title and everything, where you can see your master page file will be linked to the actual master web page, which is site.master. Right, and also all the content placeholders. You can see here there were three content placeholders which we created: head, body, and footer. All three got placed here. Now let's say we are going to touch only body part. Right, then let's do the head and footer. Let's work on the other. Right, so this is where from. Let me just replace D and this to home. This is my home body space. Now we can't browse your master all this. So that form is the end page which you will be going to browse uh, on. Okay? So let's make home page as a static page. Okay? And in this let's create a single uh, div and let's call it as a simple uh, this is a home page or so. So let me go to styling of div. <coughs> so these are still what I'm styling, let me select some this is your font, font size, let me it as x large, something, and color, let me it as blue, okay, and that's us see, this is something, okay, Style text align 
to send. Thanks for that. Now, if you go back from design, let's see how it looks. It looks like this. So here you can touch this. This is your header and footer. Now this is something which you can touch. Then you can actually make it right more in this way. Okay. Where you are saying it is welcome to search for the Now let's run this and see how it works. A simple one page you need. So after this header, let's create a simple room, which is horizontal room. And let's make it as 300 books at one point width, let's refresh this page. See, a simple page, let's say this is not 100, let me make it as 50 pages, right? So it will be more concise. And let's make it as 400 pages for height. Now you got a decent page, you have error, you have your new page and you have your object. Now let's create multiple pages now. Right? So let's go to site. This is my home. Let's go to site here. Let me right click on this and say add content page. And let me call this web form rename it to let me stop this. Let me rename this to let's say tutorials. Books. And let's say I'm going to take this out and let me copy this source maybe. But this I will say And then you can, uh, you can actually look something different here. Now we have tutorials here. Let's go back here and create one more page. Right? And let me name it as, we create a web form 3, right? We name it as uh, a whole page. Oops. About 3. And let me header and footer and just uh, open this deal right. and just say uh, about us Navigations you can see, you have different navigations you can see this main object. Right? 
so in this game, we can actually drag and drop this menu and use it. So rather than that, see how we can actually create our own menu. So in head option, right, let's say we have an image, and then let's take an example of creating a menu option. So here, let me create a simple table where I have a DR for, let's say I have a TD. So where I'll have this image part. Right, and let me take one here. Right, where I'll have multiple images. Right. So this will be slide, let's say, flow, right. So here, let me create multiple anchor links. Right. So let's say it's flow, and I have, let's check. You can see when I do this, I can pick something. That's an empty one. Okay. Similarly, let's say I have a simple TV here where I'm going to create a simple anchor element where reference I'll give it as, let's say, to do this sort of experience. Where I'm going to make this as to this. No way, I mean, this is a TV. If you want more. Uh, section in right? you can actually think in this way. But you have a simple table, table is a simple table which you can see, and here is a row, table row, and table is a table cell. Right? And you can see in subtract row I'm creating a menu. In each today I'm creating each link for home, for sorry, to do more cell. Right? I can create a new table where I'm going to create more anchors and let's call it as uh, edge of two contact let's move it as contact which here see if I'm going to let me get the out so forth something like a lot of things so you can see that you have a phone Right, to do this contact and everything. Well, anyway, is taking this, yeah, this uh, URL here, right? So now we can actually move this to two different things here. Go to source, let's say this is one table and this is another table, which you can make if you want. Or else you can actually keep this as, so we have something called, uh, So we have something called span here, column span, right? So let's say column span if you do four right? so it will actually fill all your four columns, let's say, right? So if you go back and you can see it actually renders uh one second. So let's do one thing, let's actually create this in two different ways. Here I'm creating a table here. So I've created two different tables. You can see my menu are here, home, contact, about, and all, and my tables. And this is my simple menu, but I will just now. So, let's, now here I created menu only in the master page, if you remember that. I'm not copying menu again and again for home and all. So, you have a different uh, you know, menus here. Right? So, this. Rule is coming up, right? So let's break this rule into different juices. Right, I just say, let me call margin, right, as some, some something to fit next. Should be good now. So let me go back and refresh this. Okay, now it's much pretty good. So now you have a simple uh, name of cell, right, and you have a simple menu here, right, where you can see that you know, all your uh, things here are in place, right, who you do is contact and about. And, or okay, anyways, you can do some uh, that, you know, that everything you can actually design. Now click on home, you can see it's at home. Click on tutorials, see, what you do is here. Click on contact, about, contact, tutorials, and about, see. 
other than the keeping the fingers and everything on the knee, right? But you're actually making here yeah, the wrist move. Yeah. Right? Now you can see even you can actually make this, which is your uh, uh, your um, header, right? From let's say uh, in your master, go back to source and just say here that title you want something called shrinkup.com. Right? Um, so what happens is if you actually take your share.com. So go to anything, go to the contact, about, right? So there is a, you can actually do this in the You can see that uh, in one shot, right, we created uh, free to 10 payments. We created multiple pages, function site, right? With a simple corporate filter, right? Corporate contact, about, and everything. Now it is just to design uh, this more effectively and what images you want and everything. Okay. So this is how we uh, normally use your master pages. These are master which you can see, which contains the header, menus and all the stuffs and the filter. Right? And then we have something called your uh, menus and, 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 and so on. Right? We are, I'm, I'm able to move from one page to another page. Right? And you can also play functionalities here. Right? Where let's say you are in a moment to do this, right? And you want to you want user to actually make contact. You can do that. See? Let me go to uh to do this part here and just say and say for more details contact us. Right? So let's say this contact us I want to make a uh make a link, right? So let's create a hyperlink here. And let's move this contact as a text symbol. And this HDF make it as contact. Right? Now let's go back and refresh this site. Right? You can see it says yes, you can go to home, put all this contact above the all. That says how many do you need and you want to give more details. It says who more contact. Click on this and go to contact. Now, now you can see as soon as you go to contact with our right? now this I mean, it's completely the same, right? You can stay as is, and if you can feel, it can make you feel as if you are actually going to save page, but only this content is changing. But actually, the whole page is changing, where your master and any uh, photo, I mean, all the contents are uh, same, which is which is in there from the master page. Right? So this is how uh, you can actually make use of master pages to actually uh, remove the redundancy from your uh, you know, multiple copying of multiple uh, the same code across different pages. Okay. Now in the same uh, here, right, let's say you want to create a menu at uh, using menu or not a control, let's say, right? Now when I say menu or a control, which means a uh, control uh, which is defined in ASP. So you create a menu with respect to HTML right? like links and all. You can also create a menu for me, let's say you want to create a hierarchical menu. So what I mean is so let's say in a body content that you take uh, I mean I'm making changes inside master here if you can see right where I gave the uh, height of this so but my body content and the menu part I want to keep it aside. Let's see how you know what I have I'm actually talking about is let me show you that. Let me go to some some site here. So here let's say you have a site. Now when I go to the tutorials, right, I have a menu here. I have a menu or when I have a menu for menu. When I click on this, let's say you have a side menu. Right where someone tells it. Right? But anyways, I'm actually using some kind of advanced jQuery or code for jQuery menus and all, but that's fine. But we'll see how we can actually use, uh, you know, our, our uh, dotted controls menu to just create a side menu and navigate through different pages. Okay? Now, let me go back to code here. Let me stop uh, this one. <coughs> so first, like, uh, before actually creating menu, let's use this. Um, use something called site map. 
you have a control or or uh, some option feature in uh, ASP.NET where you can create a sitemap data source to actually make it source for menus or actually do whatever you want. Let's create a sitemap first. That this is something which is mainly for navigations. So let me click add. You can see you can wait one more new item or you can go to sitemap. Sitemap is something where you can actually uh, you know uh, create all your uh, and navigations in one one single uh, XML or HTML file. Now you can see new sitemap. Now the basic name convention will be dot sitemap. Now if you say web dot sitemap, right, your ASP button can understand this easily and you can actually practice. So one sitemap attack can have only one main mode here, which is sitemap uh, mode. So you have to add a new URL and type. Type let's say I'm giving this a bold. Right, and put URL is let's say home button. So this is a simple URL. And the same way if you know anyway, you can skip the description. If you have description, you can provide on Now let's say under home we have um, let's say you have tutorials, let me just go to tutorials right this page, let me copy that. Right? And then let's say you have about or yeah, you have an about page. So which is tutorials what is place. And each node you can see sitemap node is a main node and if you want to create child nodes you can create tutorials and these are the child nodes of your but you can have in your sitemap you can have only one node. That is important. You cannot have multiple nodes as such. Right? You can have a child nodes. And let's say you have about the ASPX title is about. So the same way you can create your own sitemap node with URL as contact.asplex and by two, let's say you are doing contact. So this is a simple uh, sitemap operator and in this way you can create a uh, sitemap in a hierarchical row for any number of pages. Right? Now, these are the end and these are types. So if you want to create one more hierarchy, yes, you can do that. You can actually make this site more and you can create more site more inside this. Yes. So we should actually make, now let's say more, I'm going to do only hash, I don't want any more, but let's say I'm going to write it as a, just, just a, a book, I mean, something which, which is, which I'm just trying to show that you can actually create more nested child for child mode. Right? So this is how you can actually see your site map. Now how can you map this? You can actually map your site map, let's say, for a tree room, right? If you want to show this automatically, right? You can actually show directly. Let's do that part now. Let me create a simple table here. Now anyway, this is something which I'm doing to actually differentiate your body part and your menu. So here, now see, this is the maintenance part. So now your site is already ready, but what we want to do is, in every page you want to change one simple content that you don't want this to do, but you want to use a tree name to show the menu. Then what you can do, in every page you don't have to change. Go to Site Master and let's say you just take this body part, content placeholder, and place it wherever you want. That's it. Now, in every page, automatically that content will be placed here. And let's say in this tree, you want to do something else. So, in this tree, let's say I want to drive and drop my tree, you can see you have few things. You have Site Map part. You can actually map this to anything. Let's say I have a tree. Right? Now if I go to design, you have to do, see here we have to choose the source. Okay? So, uh, either you can, uh, so let's go back here. So if you want, you can actually set a new data source from here. Right? Uh, in new data source, when I click on this side, you have to select an option on which data source. Now you can see, as soon as you select, now this tree view supports let's say you can map an XML or sitemap. Right? Now let's say you're saying okay for this. Now 
see what happens as soon as you select to site map, right? Then your doctor can crack that you have a strong site map extension on source and it will automatically map. See? If this is ready. Right? Well, you can see now that your interior and your content is in your separate way. In your content. In your office. Right? So this is a teenage you have. Let's say let's keep style as minimum width that we can get some under two looks. Okay? Now let's run this and see how it works. Something wrong. 
right? So in this way, you will see if I wouldn't have created my simple template for this content, right? What I wouldn't have done happen? Now everything here, whatever you can see, is created dynamically, and we are we are we are not having anything static here, right? So which means how many pages it will be created minimum because this is something which is completely your uh, you know, uh, it's completely dynamic driven. So when I do this, you like this page is created dynamically, completely dynamically. Right, so when it is created dynamically, which means each and every section will have a role. Right, which means these buttons you never know whether see it, uh, how it creates. Let me show you that. So now we know that this uh, contains this will have every page I want this share buttons. These are face, LinkedIn, and blogger, Pinterest, and all. You can share. Now this page, you can see this is something which should be. Which should occur uh, in every page. This is something which you to share. Which this page, if you want to share, if you like this Android storage part, you can share in this. You can share with as well. And if you want to follow uh, the latest updates, you can see you can visit your follows. You can follow me on face, Twitter, and all. And and you can actually follow me on YouTube channel. Let's say right now, which means you are actually making few things for me. Where do you? you do all these things at one place, and what what happens? Everything uh, go to every page, right? It will be common across them, right? So this is how uh, we can actually use our master and chat boxes. Okay, so this is about uh, master and content pages and different uh, things we have. One thing which we have to uh, see here is the communication between. Parent and child, or, or a master and a child, page. right? So even the communication, right, is uh, easy over here. So let's say, let's say in my site master here, I have a simple text box. So in my key here, let's say I'm going to take a simple text box. Let me start this. So it, it's either way. Uh, when I say text, right, it's either way from master to uh, child or from child to master. Okay. So this communication is very easy here. Let's say I'm going to do it in the text box here. Right in my site master, you can see. Right, which is I have this in my master. Right. So here in my site master, I have my code back. Right, so here what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a property for this. So we have public text box, right? And let's say it is TXT master. Let's say I'm just taking some name here as a get message. Or else what I'll actually do is I'll just say get. So what to get here? I want to get my Xbox One. Yeah. So whatever I am entering here, I just want to return this. Okay. Do my text let's see. So you can actually make it as text box one directly. Okay. Maybe I should remove. Or what you can do? This is something where you are actually returning your complete control. Right? We we'll get the object of this and we can actually set. So let's say in one of my maybe home, right? In my home here, what I can do? I will take a button. Maybe I'll take a simple button here, right? And a simple label here. Box also here so just to enter data. Right now, in my view where I have this, right? So, only thing is that whatever I enter here, right, should be uh, invisible to my page, child page, and also my master list. Right? So, here let me go to button click here. Now here, whatever we are entering in uh, text box, anyways, this label is something 
which can be easily accessible because this is in the same user page. Dot text. So what I mean is, let's say, let me run this. So I'm in my own page here. And here, when I run <coughs> some text, uh, so let's say uh, I put click on button. I know that this will be populated, but how can I actually make sure that I'm communicating to master page also? Right? So let's see that part. Now here, what we can do, we have some property called master. Right? So this master will actually give access to your master page. But as of now, we don't know that we uh, only in the development of tool.aspx, uh, I know that my master page is the site dot master. But I have to make sure I'm using site master. So we have to site type copy in the actual name, which is site. Now my site master is ready. Now if you go back here, you can see the next master. Now this is a property which I have created in my Master page. Now you can actually say that text is equal to text box mode dot text. Now this is how we have to create. Now each home page or any page, right? We have their own their own master page, right? Now I'm actually typecasting my master property of the page to site so that I'm actually bringing down the scope of master to just use the site and then whatever I have defined properties or anything in my text uh, site master we will we will the right way to give access to different controls we should directly give give access or we will not give we will not get a direct access to anything we have to provide it right and now you can see I'm setting it up now it's not this and see how it works and basically as a new set of controls in .NET are is enabled right so that there is one that should get inside it very new here click on this button and you see you are actually communicating to your master page too now these are two different content now this is your child page content page uh, own content page and this is your master but you will see you are actually communicating with similarly whatever you have here can also be retrieved to uh, get that here same way. So as of now we are setting it right. So rather we very can set it to a little bit simple. And here one thing which we have to see here is that you are actually typecasting your site and master right exclusively or, or, or explicitly to make it uh, to actually make this as a uh on the master. Now, why do I do this? Because if you directly go to master property here, right? Dot. See, you don't get this txt or text master, right? Because this class doesn't know, this class doesn't know which virtual path to use. Because you are just connecting your home notice page with master page for that set. You want to make sure that even your code, code back knows which virtual path it is using, just add your master type here. We have, we can have one more uh, something called master type. Right? We will give the virtual path to your website master. That's it. Once you mention this part, right, then the your class will understand what is master. Now you see what happens, master dot You don't need this line. You don't have to separate it and press it. Now you can actually go directly and set it. This is something which is a setting up a virtual, uh, sorry, text, right? setting up a virtual path, sorry, virtual path and letting your code back know that the master, if you are using any master type, which is a property of your page, then use the site that you used. Now this is something which is my class here, you can see, site, you know, is something which is referring to my actual site master. Now you can directly see how it works. To work in the same way. Here I are actually setting my add data to set. <coughs> so let me open up now. So let's give some. 
check on this. So you can see these couple have been tried as, as well as here. Right. So this is how uh, we can actually work with master channels and communication between these two. It, it can be, you know, we, have, we are actually talking here about control type. Right? It can be any object transformation from master to child. We will be done in the same way. Give access to a master type, which master type you are using, and the code bank will automatically understand right, which master you are using, and you can actually play communities. So, this is how we normally work with uh, different things in there. Master, child, and different concepts of master child, and across communication somehow. Now we are actually using encapsulation here. Right? We are actually using some encapsulation. So when you are working in like, you know, if you have uh, to change your control, you can change at one place. And if you are using this text block property, right, at hundreds of pages to set, right, you can just change if you want to change the control. And then that's it. It will actually make, uh, make use of that control. That is the main, you know, um, to use use of encapsulating your uh, data. Okay. Now, this is about uh, master things and different concepts to site maps and navigations we have here. So, let's move on to the next topic, or rather, last topic of ASP.NET, which is one, one we'll see about the main and uh, complex you know, control which we have is a grid view. We'll see how differently we can actually set data, right, which is already uh, you know, there in uh, database directly. First, we'll see a direct path, right? Now, uh, I mean, yeah, executive and we have removed, uh, sorry, uh, topical Ajax. We have to see remove Ajax in this model, right? I can see that. So, we are looking to this. Uh, talk about the BB first. Now, we do something which is like a spreadsheet we have, right, where you can see, you can quickly show multiple rows and columns of your data. It can be a custom data or some data which you are actually getting from database and showing from. And we have very rich controls in the SP worker which can directly map and show the live data to users. And so let me open up a database so that we can actually connect to it. So this grid view is a separate control in data part. So let me just close off and let me go to new, let me close this and let me create a new page in my site itself. Let me call it as a, a separate web form here and call it as web form. So see, as soon as you create a normal form, right, you get everything. But when you create a site content, you will not get everything. You just get the page directly with the master, uh, master file mentioned and the simple content placeholder. Okay. Uh, anyways, uh, so here let's go to something called uh, data and we have something called data. See, as soon as you have a grid view, right, it will actually create a simple uh, spreadsheet for you where we have many properties, we will actually see all of them. You can have auto format there. By default, uh, ASP.NET provides a default uh, you know, settings to uh, a grid, right? Different CSS and cascade styles for uh, grid actually. Right? Let's add some color for you. Now, this is a simple uh, format which you will be getting once you get the data. So, now, here we will be the main columns where you can actually add your own columns. And here we have column types, which type of column you want. But normally, let's say if you are actually looking for uh, some bundle field type, right? now this is something which will be used, which will be bounded to some data, uh, database actually. Or a dynamic field or an image field or a checkbox you have. Right? If you are, uh, want to add memory, but if you want to add something from database directly and add it up to the source, right, we will see that part. From here, again, you have a data source which you can actually select, right? And when you select this data source, right, 
which will actually give you what different data or what different things it supports. Or else if you know that you have to create a sequence of a source, you can always go back here and we have something called SQL data source. Right on top. Right, we have a SQL data source here. Click on this, configure data source, and you can do any connection. If you don't have a college, uh, let's say, let's say I want, to, uh, I want this table to pop at my student's table, which is in student's uh, college age, right? Let's connect that. So let me connect to uh, Okay, we have 2012 mode of SQL Server and I use Windows authentication and you can see we have a college address. Test connection and okay. You can actually select your connection or name here. We have a data source, catalog as college and integrated security tool because we are using Windows authentication. Right? Click on next. Yes, I want to save the connection stream. Right? And you can actually test your query if you want. And before that, let's say this SQL data source is mainly for my students. Right? Now you can actually do this or you can always select your SQL statement or SP. If you have a SP to select, you can go that. Right? Or you can actually build your query yourself. Let's say you want to generate unique across the details or order by you know, the multiple stuff which you can select for multiple data sources. Click on next. Test query is about all the data is here. Finish. Now as soon as you finish now here, the data source is ready here. And whenever you change any column or anything in your database table, right? You'll always can change I and mean, refresh here. You don't have to remove an add again, just say refresh schema or just go to configure data source again, right? Which will always give you which you can actually change things any anytime you want. Right? Now your data source is ready. Now go back to your grid, click on this and say now your data source is exposable, right? Click on this. Now see as soon as you select it will, it will get things ready for you. Anyways, by default it is not showing the right data, it will actually show the pattern how it will be visible. Right, for so first like run this and see how it is working. Let me make that startup page. So here let, let me go to college database and open up the table. Let me select some data here. So this is your page now you can see this is your simple grid. They are actually showing data from database on a page. <coughs> okay. So this is our the data page which you created and actually making it work. Okay. So uh, you know this is again a dynamic. It is not something which is static. Now again when you refresh it, right? It will it will actually use the database again to get the right data. Now here, let's say you are deleting one now. Let's say you are deleting the age row, let's say, right? So let me create delete uh, from so on so table, right? Where your row number is 8, right? I'm going to delete this. So where uh, if I see the data, you can see 8 is the data, right? Now go back here and just refresh this. You can see, you will see the seven rows. Now this is something which is a dynamic, complete dynamic rendering of your set. Now here, let's see more properties of this field view as uh, you can actually start paging and sorting, let's say. Right? So when you say paging and sorting, you can actually define what size you want to display. Let's say you have something called your uh, page size uh, property. Now here you can see page size. How many records you want to show? Let's say I want to show only five records per page. You can always do that. And you can see you have numbering being enabled. You have some and some Sorry. Okay. Now here let's say 
Yeah, we need our case here, which you can actually bring down uh, to the level. So let's see from um, here. Now you well, can see, you can actually move from page one, page two now. Right? So here you can actually sort, let's say I want to sort my page next to one, click on this, see, it can be sorted. Click the one phone number, sorted. Clearly it can. Right? And if you click on this, right, it will, as, uh, it will do once ascending, and then click again, it will do descending. And your page will automatically change. You can see 76432 by. And click on this, you can show. Similarly, if you have a student, two, three, it is acting based on student name, right? Now, for paging, you will be done and the true data. Right? And then if you are in page two, click on phone number, you can see. You can be sorted first, you come to page one, and then you can go to post. Now, this is very handy. Uh, to use it with now let me select this and go to source see what happens now in source see this is something which completely uh, is auto generated you can see you can see the columns are bounded here right so why it is bounded because we are using my sql is that yeah data source id is sql source id here now this sql source uh sorry sql source data source one is nothing but here sql here we have created a data source now we have all the connection strings and everything and we have a SQL command being created, right? And in the SQL command, we are using sorted, I mean, the actual data field, row number and all, right? So this is something if you are in a more towards HTML uh, way, right, you can always do that. If you want to change data, you can see, for, this is a data field, this is a direct mapping, this column should be, this, this should be same as your column here. But in red text, yes, you can always change. Let's say see full space name and address full space and create data and all. Right? You can change in this here. So when you run this, you can see address different. Right? You can see different address. So at the same data source, right, you can actually use for multiple controls. There is not only that you can use it, but one data source can be used in one page I mean. In one page, you can actually use data source for multiple controls. So let me get something called, again, drop down this menu. Now here, you can choose your data source. There you have all the data sources here. So this data source is mainly for, see, each data source will be for one table. Right? If you want to have multiple data sources for, I mean, multiple data sources for multiple tables, you have to create different modes for multiple, uh, different data sources for each scheme. Now here, let's say I'm going to select student name and the value student name will become OK. Right? Now I'm going to both are running in the same, they both will be updated in the same fashion. See how it works now. See, all the details, whatever you can see here, I can see it in the So let me renew this page in for this so that we can actually see it much better. So let me do this. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some one row here. So I just took to as create two or select two views or insert to this view. Right, let's say you have a row number, some ten student name, let's go uh no uh in 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 anything actually. So let's say manual and let's say you have address seven by two twenty five phone number is that kind of game let's get number and Create time is uh, let's say predict, so let's say predict, Oops. right? And done this. So now, as soon as you run it, right? So let me even select the data. Right? You have, you have some row with row number ten, let's say, right? Now, before actually refreshing, you can see there are you know, seven students here and we have seven uh, you know, details here. Actually. 
and I'm going to refresh so you got one more manual and you can see it got a right you can see that you know you, with the one data source that you're actually working in different things right let's say this is manual and let me change it to continuance uh so the DC cost around this but you can see this will be your primary constraint because this will be unique. You do C1, let me be true because we, we should have actually made it as a uh, unique identifier, maybe C123 and this. Let me have added two, two more records. Go back to a page here and refresh. You'll see two more records and again maybe C1. So this is how your page will be live and you'll be getting data. So things are about encrypting control and maybe you see the data source which are very clean, right? So this data source can be used for multiple controls. Where if there is a change in schema, make sure they are actually making different schema. And if this schema has to be applied for different controls, if you also have something called an interest schema for uh, and every uh you know, every control you are using, what kind control you use. So this is about the control and the data source you have. Right. Now let's go to the next one, which is the last topic of our ASP development, which is Ajax. Okay. So Ajax is nothing but your asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Right. So when we say JavaScript, right, which means you know, you are actually uh, loading or rendering different parts of your page asynchronously. What does it mean asynchronously? See what happens whenever I run in my page, right? I run the same page, the form page, right? So until my all the contents of my page is not where you can see, this will be you know waiting until all of my you know, contents are not loaded. But that is uh, you know, that is not correct in terms of if you are actually creating any page which contains multiple uh, you know, sections of components. Right? Let's take an example of creating a site or you know, some site which contains you know, dashboards. Right? So in that dashboard, we will be using so many components which can usually have a rich control to uh, drive data, do some operation. That operation may take many, much bigger time and then you are going into your invoice, right? So if you are doing that, right, now if everything, each and every component, let's say is a grid, is a combo box and you have uh, 10 different controls, all are loading at, at once, which means all are loading uh, sequentially, then your page loading will get delayed. And no one would like uh, to actually see a uh, site which is uh, rendering so slow because of the back and loss, right? So because of that, we have something called Ajax. Ajax will actually make different components of a page render asynchronously. When you say asynchronously, it means whatever content is done with the uh, it will be shown. And whatever uh, content is still going, it will still be on a wave state. Right? Let's say if you have 10 different positions, uh, I mean, you see that how it actually works, right? It helps how to actually make few controls work, right? We can always need that, but in fewer sections, right? If you want to build, uh, you know, let's say, in your dashboard, only one section is calculating index of a market and it, it may take some time, then all other contents will be loaded and only that particular content can actually make, make it as a thing. But this is something which you can actually use in Ajax, which is a asynchronous JavaScript on XML. Okay. So let's see uh, uh, a simple uh, page here. Let me create a simple page web form. A few files Ajax. So in here, so let me take few controls. So here, what I do is uh, I'll take some logos here. Okay, 
let's say I'm going to take some three lines, right? So initially I'm not going to use any results or anything here. Right? And then let me take a simple pattern here. So what I am doing is let me go to one pack. So in here, let's say I'm going to use my global one dot text. All the you know, controls I'm going to use some great time to map all three. Let's say we have a label two and label three also. Okay. So this is a simple example which we are watching as well. As soon as I click on you know, or refresh my screen by, you can see all the controls are changed. And also when I click on this button, right, so you can see that everything is changing because uh, we know that you know all they are they are updating in the same mode and not using even you know, the post type mode anyways. Right? So what happens here is let's say in my even if I am using if not in post back. Right? And here, let's say I'm gonna take let me just go to button and in button click what I'm doing in the is I'm just trying to move my label, let's say I just update label one dot text. So Something called you know, time dot you know, dot. I just want to update this now. Right? You have to run this. <coughs> so, as I am doing this, right, let's say I am actually updating all, but I want to make only label text one, which is one part of my page to render. And anyways, when you change, you will see the change will be very well. But you can see that the complete page is moving again. And as of now, you can see the minimal uh, uh, you know, uh, rendering time because the, you know, the page is uh, a lightweight and you can see this changing. But you can see that whenever I click on this, you can see the page is loading and it is painting the complete conference at once. Right? So even when you are to refresh, right? everything will be refresh, see? And again, this content will change. Right? From here, what is happening when you click, everything else are actually trying to paint. Now here, what we can do is we can actually use something called Ajax to pre few controls, whatever you want to see. See, when you click on the button, let's say only one level should be updated, right? Now, then you keep only that label and button in some Ajax components. So how to do that? So for that, we right, have two very important classes which you have in uh, .NET. If you are using 2008 uh, and other versions, you will have direct Ajax extensions here. But if you are using 2005, you should be able to do it. have to install. Anyways, we will be using at least 2010 and above years to right? Then you have this Ajax extensions already being enabled. Right? So in this we have a few very important classes, which is the first one is script manager. Now for one page, if you want to actually keep multiple components of your uh, or multiple parts of your web page in different uh, sections, right? You would have only one script manager. And if you are using a master page, and you have some 10 different pages, you can keep only one script manager at master. That's it. That one script manager will work for all your pages. Okay. Now, what is script manager? Now, the script manager is the main 
So we're wondering here, you know, which actually takes, uh, takes uh, you know, uh, works for us to render actual uh, state which runs at a back end to actually render by different components in parallel. Now, this is something which is taken care of the different uh, components by to render a different thing. But what exactly are those components? Now, let's say my label one and button is, let's say, one section which should be rendered. When I click on this button, this only this part should be uh, painted. Right? Or uh, rendered and then, uh, you know, uh, this should be updated and updated, let's say. Let's say this is the only part I have. And this section is one, no one button. And these two labels are different. Let's say for these two labels, let's say I have one more uh, button. Okay. So these are at one place and let me just um, give some horizontal line here just to distinguish between them. Okay. Now I have two different labels which I have button to and let's go to button 2 here and let me update these to two labels. So now how can I make this? When I click on button 2, only this part, which means only button 2 updates level 2 and level 3, let's say, right? Only this part should be updated. That's my need. Now here for that what you can do is you can actually make this component as one set. So now to do a level one set, you have something but you have to put those controls in something called update panel. Now this is the update panel which script manager can understand that okay whatever is mentioned in this update panel so that is something which I have to make it render asynchronously. Now in this update panel we have, we have two different options on this content template. You can place all the controls that you want to place everything in here. Now whatever controls you have here right and whatever trigger happens let's say a button you can not right. So everything happens for these components. Now this is an update panel. So in this way you can have any number of update panels. So all these update panels will get registered with one single script manager. Now here you can have the update panel here. And what you can do, you can actually take this as a content template. And you can close all the controls, let's say, let us see how things are going to work. Let's see this now. Now I have made my waste.net page or, or my web page by using Ajax and Ajax. It's, it's very simple to do that. So we have the district manager and update panel, whatever different components are looking for. Let's go back and see. Now let me click on this button. See, we will never see any refresh or anything. Let me click on this. See, only that component is changing. Click on this, you can see when this component changes and you can't see any rental part. Right, so this is something which is when you click on this, where you will be able to make sure you call JavaScript part and uh, XML, we say response, which is a request part. As soon as you click on this, a post request will be generated and go to server. But you never will be maintained. Right to the cube pack. And when you get response, then it will be, it will actually uh, render on the controls what are actually typing Now, this is something which is called as an attach, which you can use to actually make your, uh, you know, sections exclusively. Okay. So, this is uh, your uh, attach. Now, here again, let's say I have some more control. Uh, if you want to use, let's say, we have a simple combo box. Let me just take a simple combo box. I mean, double this and here. And let's say, let me show you. I think this will be a good example to show. Uh, let's say this drop down list I have. And I have, it, uh, I have a simple menu. Right? And this drop down list is auto push back through and go to design and let's say this is bound to some data source that we created new data sources it doesn't have 
public transportation stream next let's say it's a students or students room next let's go to finish and I'm going to use this room here click on ok and here I'm, I'm actually going to make some event so let's say I want to show maybe 4.txt is equal to so your drop down is to dot selected item dot text let me run this and show how it actually works okay, let me see how it actually works and how Ajax make this uh, mode first see when I select something like right? see my complete page is refreshing all my controls are moving but anyways when I still this only my label is changing and only this some other so not only is not changing but you can see everything is re repainted when I search something right? everything is okay now in this way uh, see uh, for just imagine if you have Combined controls of combo boxes in some place that code and you have no different components, right? Now, which means everything will be refreshed at once. And keep on drawing, refreshed, right? Now, which means this is not a right behavior which I want, let's say. Right? When we think of it and just keep it there, okay, I want to refresh my uh, drop down list to be. Now, whenever I change the double list, the full back should happen asynchronous. So, for that, what you can do, you can create an update time again. Take an update time and you can actually keep it. Take an update time here. And no update time will get saved. You want one content template. We come to the first, second one. We come to that. So, let's say I'm going to put everything in. Right? Now, let's turn on Now again, it can be any number of times, you know, other times are using, but all the other times will be registered with one script manager. Right? So I'm running this stuff now, see, when I change, see, only that part of the removal. I'm actually changing this part, right? It will actually change from that part. So now complete page is not going to do, but when I and I click on this again, only this part is changed. And I click on this, only this part is changed. Similarly, this part. So this is how you can actually use your Ajax to uh, actually make your components of your page more robust, right? And it will actually make, actually, so the, the user will be happy to see uh, that whatever he is doing is just updating only one page. And everything else is retained. Right? So this is something which happens mostly for close back. Right? And if you refresh things again, right? Once you refresh, obviously all the data will be in the same. Right? There's this really Ajax is for when you are doing some close back event, right? Now and you don't want complete page to refresh. Normal, normal behavior page is to get refreshed. Every time you get a single response update in one level, right? Obviously you can prepaint your uh, page. But Ajax will make sure that it is actually rendering only the part whatever we are actually trying to update. And this is something which is about Ajax. Now here, one last thing is let's say, um, what is a trigger? You have something called trigger in this. Right? Now let's say your drop down list is outside your control panel and this is affecting multiple uh, things etc. Let me take out this and right. Now see what happens. I just kept my maybe in update panel, but my drop down list is uh, not in this update panel. Uh, I mean, it is not in any update panel, but it is out of any of the update panels. So let's see what happens. Not the control. 
which is actually going to go back uh, request. Right? Now, what does it mean is, obviously, I'm keeping only uh, the data part will not work, but whatever component is actually going to post back action, right? So that should be either placed completely on the update panel or at least register the post back event and event uh, event event. Let's say for this document, this selected changes is the main uh, you know, um, event which I want to trigger. So here what you can do, you can, in that case, you can use something called trigger. So trigger is, you know, uh, you have triggers, where you can have something called a single go back trigger. Let's say for which control you want. Let's say I want it for drop down list. And you have to do event name. Right? Okay. Now event is your select and exchange. So we can go either way. Now, at least, you know, if you, if you haven't provided a complete control in here, at least you can provide a trigger so that whenever you do some action in your right, some action, you can do, uh, you can actually take that action as a uh, update, uh, you know, uh, async action, and your uh, actual, uh, you know, actual processing will be done by the Ajax conference. Now here, let me run this and see how it works. Let me stop it. So here, let me just change. Now you can see, well, I'm just, I just registered a post back event of common box with my trigger of our web panel and you can see the adapts adapts the empty picture. Right? Now let's say the next scenario is that let's say I have my logo one logo outside of uh, this and here let me take one more logo here which is a which is not registered with your adapts of the empty panel. And in my uh, code back and updating the level 5 to do the appointment. This is my level 5, right? Now let's show this and see. So level 4 is registered with the panel and level 5 is not. And the drop down, drop down, uh, trigger event which is certain as changes is registered with your uh, <coughs> update panel uh, trigger. Let's see how it actually works. Now which one is important? When I change this, see. The label which is registered will be changed. Why? Right? Because when I change this, I know that the trigger is registered with the update panel, and in that update panel, whatever are registered will be updated. If that update panel or if that are registered with any one of the update panel, it will get updated. Otherwise, if not, even if you want to update. Because that is how it is going to work. If you want to actually uh, update this level 5, make sure you are registering it. Okay. Now let's see how it works. So let me change this. You can see. Not level 4 and level 5 will be changed. Right? Sign, sign again. Now, this is something which is about Ajax. Concept fundamentals you have and more like triggers. But so in this way, you can actually work uh, in two ways. One complete control function will be in one update panel and everything will be uh, separated. Right. So sometimes what uh, you know, some sites do is so they keep update panel directly to a master page, which means the site master is there, right? So here what uh, some people do is uh, site master everything which is in the body, right? This uh, content page body will be placed under one update panel like this. So let's say let me just show you the site master now. Let me take this home and start a page, right? 
So in general, when I run this right, see how it actually renders. So I'm just going to use my Ajax uh, in here. So when I click on the tool, see my, my complete page, page is rendered, right? But anyway, my page is getting painted, but you can see that you know, all the counters are ready. So let me keep this in Ajax and see how it works. So go to my, let's say, menu options, which I have in here, right? Which, I mean, I have my head, right? I have uh, this main name. So this is the main thing I have. Let's say I want to keep all this in my uh, in my project. So here, let's get one uh, script manager. My script manager is here, and let's click an update panel by where all my content will be. So let's say here we have a content template which. Which means your new stream almost complete. Which, right? When that happens, everything you are actually keeping in one update panel where all the controls, all the triggers, whatever you are doing, will be reset. You have seen this. Now your page will actually become like you know, uh, smaller. And click on the functions. So let's see what when I click on the buttons, uh, about right you can see things are moving in parallel. So so we head and everything is fine. Let's click on the buttons. Should actually move slower because we are using one script manager and we have an update panel for all the views. Right? Okay. So we can have a content component and we have a site map registered here. We actually, or at least you have a new USB registered here. So this should actually make cool. So here, I mean, uh, when, you, when you actually click on things like, should let me just make it more dark. Let's see. Let's say I'm going to keep this table in some of the time, let's say. So this is the room where I have all the menus and everything. This is in the main body part here. Uh, let's check out how it's going to work here. But you 
can see the action uh, happening finally, right? Not with the complete. Uh, So here, let me just uh, click on the tools. Okay. So here, what you can do here is let me use something called update progress. So update progress is something which you will actually make progress and here to have. Let's say I'm going to take some image. Let's take a picture of it. Let's take an image. Let's run this. So normally, this is something where you can actually keep some images where it should be like moving. Which will say something like loading, the page is loading, please wait, right? Which will be uh, <coughs> loaded asynchronously. Now, even your progress will be loaded so that you know whenever your loading is going on, right, this will work. Let me click on this. Okay, so now. Ajax which you have where you can actually use different update panels, suite managers, triggers, right? Or the multiple controls part uh, or multiple uh, components you have, which is components like a set of controls you have, right? And you can actually make it through that. So this is about uh, Ajax and this is this is what we have in ASP.NET uh, context.